What is up guys, welcome back to another video and to the final video of this series where we work on a three day split of pull, push and legs. Today we're gonna finish off with our legs which is actually a muscle group that is sometimes put aside and overlooked in the calisthenics community. And I'll be brutally honest with you guys, if you want to develop massive legs and full muscle development, you're better off using weights, just because it is much simpler to progressively overload the muscle. Nothing can really replace a barbell squat or a deadlift. However, this doesn't mean that you cannot build solid and strong legs using body weight exercises only, but keep in mind that this is not the most optimal way. This routine will definitely challenge you and make your legs grow. However, my training has evolved to a point that I don't focus too much on muscle building and I focus more on movement efficiency and that's what this routine is going to be more about. The last point that I want to make is that your legs are almost half your entire body. So for me to cover all the angles like we did in the pushing and on the pulling workout, it'll take me like three to four routines to actually cover all the movement angles that we have on our legs. We did our best to select the most efficient and useful exercises for our legs so you can get the best bang for your buck. But keep in mind that there are hundreds of useful leg exercises that are not included in this routine and that will be covered in future workouts. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Make sure you are fully warm up, especially when we are talking about our legs. And without further ado, let's fire up those legs. Alright guys, so let's begin. So as always, I like to start with a explosive movement because you want to be fresh whenever you're doing something explosive. And we're going to do box jumps. And especially you want to be fresh before you attempt this exercise just because it is very dangerous if you put it at the end of your leg workout. Your legs are going to be dead and you're going to have trouble like jumping on the box or whatever you're jumping towards. So for modifications to this exercise, just lower the elevation. And if you're really afraid to actually jump on top of something, I would recommend just to start with regular jump squats. And as you start building height on your jump, then you can move on to an elevation. So choose an elevation that allows you to go for 10 reps that you feel comfortable. We're gonna go low. And from here, you're gonna jump as high as you can go. Get to the elevation into a lower squat, then you're going to stand up, then you're going to lower down, and you can either walk down if you're fearful to come down, or if you're jumping backwards, make sure that when you jump back, you're actually landing softly and you're not putting too much pressure on your knee. So let's go for 10 of those. So lower down, jump as high as you can. For one, let's go for nine more. your hands to keep the balance in the entire movement. Make sure you're going low. It's basically you're doing a squat plus a jump. Keep your core engaged every time you jump. Last one. Go up. When you go up, you extend completely your hips. Engage your glutes, quads, everything's tight. You come back down. Next one is going to be pistol squats. And I'm choosing pistol squats for several reasons. First is one of the most efficient ways to overload your quad in body weight. But if you don't have the mobility or if you don't have your pistol squat very clear yet, or if you cannot get to more than five reps, maybe there are other options that you could use to actually overload the quad if that's your main goal. So if you're still struggling with the pistol squat, I would recommend to go for shrimp squat, which is just single leg squat basically. You stand on one foot, you lower down with control, and then you push up. Here you also need a lot of dorsiflexion in your ankle, but not as much as if you were doing a pistol squat. And if you wanna go for pistol squat, as always, you can modify by using an elevation. Find an elevation that is comfortable for you and you can actually feel the work in your quad and that you can go for six reps that we're gonna go for. And finally, 
I'm gonna go for alternating piece of squats, basically one side, then I go to the other one. The reason I'm doing this, if you're working towards muscle building, I would just stick to doing six reps on one side to really fatigue the muscle. But if you're working for endurance or efficiency or movement in general, I like to switch it up so I'm not basically tiring so much my muscle, but I'm actually working on the movement patterns. So let's go for six on each side, depending on the progression, shrimp squats if you are on that level or using elevation if you're on that level. Let's go for the left one first, so left foot on the floor, right foot on front, find your balance, fire up your hip flexor so everything is engaged, point your toes, hands right here to keep the balance, lower with control, and push it up, that's one on one side, then you switch side, if you're doing alternating, then you come down, push it up, that's for one on each side, let's go for five more. Again, if you want a full tutorial for the pistol squat, I have a very, very detailed tutorial and actually a follow along routine to actually get the pistol squat. I'm gonna link it up, up here, but choose the right progression for this routine, this according to your goals and again, according to your level. Next one, I'm gonna go back towards the box and we're gonna work on a combination of two exercises. We're gonna do a step ups and then we're gonna do single leg deadlift. So let me demonstrate first. We're gonna place, start with the left one, first and the right foot you're gonna get it as close to the box as possible that way you're going to minimize the momentum of coming up what most people do is they really jump in here and they're not activating completely the quad muscles and the hamstrings in the full movement so place the foot very close to the box or to the elevation and slide the foot up when you're coming up make sure your knee is always going to the outside if you don't have enough dorsiflexion this might be a little bit challenging. You're gonna find your knee caving in. If you find yourself doing that, put your feet a little forward. So when you go up, the knee doesn't have to go that much forward if you don't have enough range of motion in your ankle, which is basically the flexibility of your calf muscle. But if you have enough, you can place the foot very close to the box and the other foot very close as well. So you go in an upward motion completely. Then the next exercise is going to be a single leg deadlift. Use your hands for balance. Keep the leg straight, maybe slightly bend on the knee. Come down, flexing at the hip level. Then extend at the hip level, engaging, in this case, my left glute. Then come down, and that'll be one rep. Let's go for six reps on the left one, and then let's go for six reps on the right one. Start with the left, find your foot, prepare yourself, be aware of your knee facing forward and a little bit to the outside. Then Press up, engage your glutes once you extend completely, then use your hands for balance, flex from the hip, then extend from the hip, engaging your glute again. That is for one, let's go for five more. Down. your core engaged the entire time. Basically, every time you're doing legs, you wanna keep that core engaged for stabilization in every single movement that you do. I don't know if that was five or six, I'm just gonna do one more, just for the sake of it. Push up, lean forward, keep your core engaged, extend your hips, engage your glutes, lower down with control, switch legs, right leg on top, Again, find your distance according to your ankle dorsiflexion flexibility. Left foot close to the elevation. Knees facing forward, a little bit to the outside. Chest is up, core is engaged. Hands are here forward. You push up, lean forward, extend the hip, lower down, push up. Legs from here, extend. Come down, go up, six, ten, and 
three more. Again, guys, like I said, if your main goal is building massive legs, I would recommend to separate these two exercises and do a step up with very, very heavy weight both on both legs and then work on single leg deadlift again with a weight that allows you to get to eight to 12 reps and you're struggling to get to that number or just go for regular deadlift or regular squats as I said in the beginning. But if you're working towards movement efficiency, this is an amazing compound exercise just because you're working on several movements. First one would be knee extension when you go up, which engages your quads and then your glutes once you extend at the end. Then we flex from the hips and then we extend at the hip level, engaging again our quads and our glutes. And it's just an amazing all around exercise. Next one is going to be Cossack to core seat Squat. We're gonna go for six reps on each side. Let me demonstrate first, because this is a, again, it's a combination of two exercises. So cross a squat, you go really, really wide, not super, super wide, go to a stand that, uh, that allows you, it depends on your flexibility. Try it and see which position feels comfortable for you. From here, we're gonna start going towards the left. So you bend the left knee, knee is facing forward, the right foot, you're gonna open up and dorsiflex it or flex it towards you and then you're gonna push back up and you go to a normal stand. That will be the Cossack squat, which is the first part of the movement. Then we stay on the right leg, on the right foot, and then you're going to slide the left foot around as far back as you can go, as far back as your flexibility allows you. You can bend slightly your knee. From here, the knee is going to be facing forward. You're going to squat down, slow as you can go, and then you're going to go back. So here on the Cossack squat, we're basically working on adduction of the leg, which is bringing the knee to the center line. And then when we're doing the cursor squat, we're working on abduction of the leg, which is getting the leg outside of your body's center line. So a couple modifications for this exercise. I know it's kind of confusing, especially if you don't have the mobility to do the exercise. You can grab a block or anything to elevate yourself. Again, guys, remember that we have blocks and apparel and yoga mats all in the store. So if you wanna grab a pair of blocks, the link is going to be down in the description. But for the modification of this exercise, if we're going for the Cossack on the left, which is what we're gonna start for, it's good to elevate your heel if you don't have enough dorsiflexion to actually come down. So if you try it without the block and you find yourself coming here and lifting the heel, you might need to put something in here until you work towards achieving the necessary flexibility to get all the way down. And last thing that I wanna give you for the Costa squat is if you're working more towards developing your hamstring flexibility, keep your foot flexed towards you. That will put more emphasis on the hamstring. But if you're working towards developing your inner hip flexibility, I would invert my foot in this position. You're gonna feel it, you're gonna really feel it like all the way here in your hips, which another tip or another basically theory they wanna give you, this would be inversion of the foot and this would be eversion of the foot. So if you're working towards developing your hip flexibility, go for an inversion of the foot, whatever you're doing the cross squat. Well, enough talking, let's go for six reps on each side of both movements. So go into a wide stand, let's start going towards the right. I'm gonna go for flex mode to work a little bit on my hamstrings. Then you're going to push up, bring the left leg around, lower down with control, engage all the right hip, your glutes, push up, go back to stand. That is for one, so for five more. Hip, last one, go as low as you can go, push yourself back up, 
hips are always facing forward. Even if you are twisting, your hips always facing forward, lower with control, go back to center. Let's go for the left side. Bend the left knee facing forward. Twist the right foot, and push it up. Slide the right foot back, knee facing forward. Push up the strength of your hips and your left glute. Go back to center, everything is engaged. Let's go for five more. Twist the left foot, push up, slide the right foot back, down, and go back to center. Again, guys, this might seem like a very complex exercise, especially if you don't have the mobility. Like I said, we're working towards movement efficiency more than muscle development, even though this is going to fire up your quads. But if you find yourself not being able to get to the deepest position, don't get frustrated and just lower until you can go. Start working on that flexibility and then slide back until you can go. It's, it's good if you're here. You don't need to be here like with your leg straight. That is actually not necessarily, especially if your goal is muscle building. But if you're going towards movement efficiency, then try to slowly increase that range of motion in your legs. Next one is going to be a very advanced exercise we're gonna do over there. But I wanna show you the easiest or the easier progression for that. If you do that and it feels super, super intense, the exercise there is going to be a Nordic hamstring curl, but that can be very, very intense in your hamstrings. I'm gonna still show you progressions for that exercise, but if you're a total beginner and if you're a beginner for bodyweight exercises in your legs, I would recommend to do this exercise for your hamstrings, because now we're gonna target our hamstrings directly. So for our hamstrings, you want to imagine your hamstrings as your bicep, basically, and this muscle is actually called the bicep femoris, so it serves as a function, like you're curling in this motion, it's the same way as you're curling with your bicep. So how we're gonna do it, you're gonna lay down in your back, you're gonna raise your hips, so your glutes are engaged, your hamstrings are still engaged here, but you're going to slide towards you, like if you're doing like a curl with your biceps, then you're going to slide down, keep everything tight, and then slide back up, then slide down, slide up, always keeping extension on the hips so your glutes are always isometrically working. If this is too easy, guys, then forget about the towel, forget about sliding, forget about laying down. Well, we're actually going to lay down now. We're gonna do a Nordic hamstring curl, which is, well known to be the hardest leg exercise that there is uh, in body weight, at least in body weight. You're gonna place your feet uh, in a surface that can support you. Some people like to use a partner to grab their feet. You can have it flexed or you can have it pointed. It really doesn't make a difference in the activation of the hamstrings and in the developing of your hamstring. So whichever feels more comfortable. For me right now, I need to have it flexed just because if I have a point, I don't have support. But flex your foot and from here, First thing is keep your core engaged, engage your glute, everything is in a straight line, and you're going to lower down with control, keeping your hands here, so when you come down, you can support yourself and then push yourself back up. So we're doing basically a negative motion, which is more than enough to actually develop in those hamstrings. If you can go for the full movement, please uh, send me a video or tag us, that would be amazing to see. But if you're a beginner, I would recommend to keep your hands right here. If you're a little more advanced, you can place your hands right here or even right here. The higher your hands are, the more leverage you have in the exercise, the more weight is going forward, and obviously the harder it's going to be to actually have the reflex to control the movement. I'm gonna have my hands right here, and we're only going to go for six of those. So control the movement, keep everything tight, your glutes are tight, your hamstrings are tight. Place your hands right here, try to lower as slow as you can. Once you feel that basically your body falls, use your hands, push yourself back up. That is for one, so five more. And last one, everything tight, tight. 
yourself down and push yourself back up. Again, if that's way too hard and you feel way too much pain on your hamstring, like a pain that can cause injury, please don't do that exercise or just work on a smaller range of motion, like just go forward and then come all the way down and then slowly try to control that negative as much as you can and eventually one day pull yourself back up using only the strength of your hamstring to support all your body weight. Next one, we're gonna go towards the hip flexors. This is an, ex an exercise or a muscle that is usually neglected just because we, li we like to think of our legs from here down, but we have our hip flexor, which is actually a combination of muscle that is commonly neglected in most uh, workout programs and is super, super, super important. It serves to actually uh, flex the leg at the hip level, uh, hip flexor basically, you're flexing your hip, and it engages your psoas, your iliacus, which is underneath the psoas, and those two muscle groups are actually the ones that connect your legs to your torso. Together they're called the ilia psoas. Uh, it's, in short, it's a very, very important group of muscle that people neglect, especially when working your legs. So it really works for LCs, for press to handstands, and for many, many other things, even the pistol squat to keep that leg straight. And how we're gonna do it is a common, old-fashioned, uh, seated pipe compression. How we're gonna do it, you're gonna sit up, tall and straight, and the more flexible your hamstrings are, the easier this exercise is going to be. Uh, that's why I'm doing it after the Nordic curl, because we just compress the hamstrings a lot. Now we can get like a little stretch. It's gonna be harder just because you actually just compress your hamstrings, but we have the chance to actually stretch the hamstrings after we work on them. So for here, chest is up, you lean forward until you can go, your hands go forward, the more forward your hands are, obviously the harder the exercise is going to be. So find a spot that you can go for 10 reps, which we're gonna go for. Uh, you can be on your fingertips, you can be on your hands. I'm gonna be on my hands. Point your toes, engage everything from your quads all the way up to your toes. From here, sit up straight, lift as high as you can go, and then lower down without touching the floor, like one inch, that is for one, let's go for nine more. One, hold, keep leaning forward. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Whew. So again, that is an amazing exercise, not only for your legs, but for all movement efficiency in general. If you're gonna get the pistol squat, if you wanna be good at your L seat, at your V seat, it's, it's a muscle that you need to pay very, very close attention to. Last one, it's another muscle that a lot of you guys have been really uh, asking me to do an exercise for that, and it's how to develop our little calf, our little gemelos in Spanish. So for this one, we're gonna grab a block, again, or anything to elevate your foot, so that way we can get a deeper range of motion. You can get a full stretch on the calf, and then you're going to plantar flex, which basically means uh, flexing your foot to engage the calf, and then we're going to dorsiflex to actually stretch the calf. So you can use something to support yourself. We're gonna do single leg calf raises, and we're gonna go for 15 on each side. We're choosing a high number to actually get some stimulus in the calf. Again, if your goal is to build muscle, especially in your calf, I would recommend to grab a dumbbell or something and work on this motion right here, so you can actually really target your calf. And another point before I actually do the exercise, if you really, really want to make your calf grow bigger. The calf is a muscle that is also called as a resilient muscle, just like your core, which basically means that they recover very, very fast. So you can train your calf every other day and you can actually build it up to train your calf every single day if you feel like your calf are not actually growing. So if building your calf is a must for you, I, I wouldn't do this routine. I would do this routine plus three or four exercises of calf at the end, or I would work on my calf every single day. But anyways, let's just target a little bit of the calf to finish off this workout. Support yourself however you like. Keep your body completely straight. Completely flex the calf muscles. Then dorsiflex by stretching the calf muscle. Then plant flex for one. 
64421. in that calf for like two seconds, eight, up, nine, ten, like if you're really squeezing, I'm already feeling like my calf is on fire, eleven, we got four more, four, go down, and two more, stretch completely, flex, stretch, and flex, all four, three, two, one, and release, Whew. If you want to get a little stretch after that, find something to put your foot and stretch. Little calf, I literally need that stretch because if you do that exercise right with the right proper activation and flexion of your foot, you're going to feel the calf really, really fire up. And if you don't feel it, again, grab a weight or go ahead and do more reps. Let's go now with the left, plant your foot, support yourself, lower down, Get a little backwards, lower down, get that good stretch on your calf and that dorsiflexion flexibility, then flex the foot as hard as you can go, squeeze your calf, that's for one, go four, or two more. body is completely straight, your core is engaged too, your glute is also engaged, even though we're only working on the calf, you want to feel the activation on your entire body. And last one, get that deep stretch, push it up. Get that contraction as much as possible. Make it burn, make it burn, and release. And again, if you need a little stretch, you can go here. Or even right here, put it like more backwards, and then just lean forward, even bend your knee slightly, and you get that deep and nice stretch on your calf. That way you are not that sore tomorrow that if you don't stretch after your leg workout, you're gonna be more sore than if you stretch, which actually guys, if you want a stretching video for your legs, post-workout, because I love to stretch my legs after I'm done working out my legs, please leave it in the comment section down below and we'll make sure to cover that in future videos. But there you have it guys, this is what I would call a efficient and useful body weight leg uh, workout. Again, there are many, many exercises and useful exercises that we did not include. And also, again, you can grab a weight for all the exercises that we just did. At least most of them, you can just grab a dumbbell for the step ups, for the pistol squats, if your goal is muscle building. But again, this routine is more directed towards efficiency of movements. I'll do more videos on how to actually develop uh, the muscles in your legs, and we're probably going to be using weights for that one. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up to support the channel. Remember that Saturno Movement apparel and equipment is already available to purchase. Chase. I'm going to link everything down in the description. Again, we have yoga mats, yoga blocks, where joggers are going to be restocking soon. We have different colors of t-shirts. We have everyday t-shirts as well as Pro T uh, SNT, which is perfect to work out. We also have resistance bands to take your calisthenics journey to the next level and many, many other things that are coming up. Also, remember that the Saturno Movement team and I will be at Orlando FIBO this December 5th to December 8th. All the information is going to be down in the description. So make sure to join us for that if you are around that area. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any content in the future. And as always, guys, I'll see you all next week. Much love. What is up guys? First of all, thank you so much for watching the video. From now on, we're gonna be doing a weekly challenge just to keep things a little bit more fun and also to connect with all of you guys. So for this week challenge, it's going to be doing as many alternating pistol squats, just like I did on the video, without resting. And to participate, just make sure to follow all the guidelines listed below and the winner will be announced at the end of our next YouTube video. So do your best. 
have fun, keep a good form, and that's it. See you next week, guys.